welcome friends for this beautiful event here meeting together on a bright sunny day and i am so happy to see you my friends are helping me fulfill my dream thank you very much for that this is great opportunity for doing seva and great masters time mitti seva working on the land was a great opportunity for us we try to take every opportunity we could to take part in the mitti seva i'm so happy to see all of you here joining me in preparing something which will commemorate the memory of my master hazur maharaj baba saban singh this is all his work that is going on i am merely an instrument carrying out his work and the power that creates all this is all baba saban singh so that is why this will be dedicated as some something made for remembering my master this great master himself worked on establishing a dera in india on the river bias and he dedicated to his master and called it dera baba jamal singh he said that the spiritual axis of spirituality will shift to the united states in a big way and localize itself in the united states here so i just found the opportunity to come here to united states to take a ringside seat and watch how this is going to happen now i'm watching it happen you are the ones who are creating it so that is why as the dome gets ready for which you are preparing here doing seva here i will definitely dedicate it to my master and it will be called dera baba saban singh in united states i am very happy that you all could come over and even on the rough terrain i got a i got a little ride a better ride in a golf cart not for playing golf but just being just because of my age i was given some assistance so i can come and see what's going on i'll be spending a lot of time here once the dome is ready it's not that uh, it's a short term thing and great master has given extensions to me in my life from time to time so so that his work can be accomplished here i know that even at this age he has not only asked me to carry out the work of spreading his teachings in the western part of the world and some somewhat in eastern part also but he is also asked me to take charge of a few corporations at age 92 i got a job in four corporations wow. i never expected that it's all great master creating the means so that many of us can participate in other economic activities which would help us to be closer to this place so that is why these four corporations that will grow will provide opportunities for employment investment work for a lot of us and that is why that will make it easier for us to spend more time here many of us are working elsewhere and would like to spend more time here maybe the opportunity he is creating the economic opportunity he is creating for the purpose for those who want to be close they can also come and work here we are looking at the possibility of more investments in wisconsin closer to this place so that opportunities for work will be available to many of you so this also is part of great master's plan and that he has put me in charge of this i am very grateful and i have chosen some very wonderful people with me to work on these projects and they will be functioning as chief uh, operating officers of these four corporations and they are doing a great job already in the last couple of months i'm very happy to see how speedily they are working to create those corporations as active uh, active economic units to help all of us so i am happy that this is going on according to plan great masters plan so great masters plan is that the spirituality will spread in a very big way 
several masters will come this place is not being prepared for one one time it is being prepared for many masters to come and they will carry out the same same work which great master did and the same teachings which he taught will be taught here i have made sure that when i teach anything on behalf of my master it is done exactly according to his instructions exactly within his teachings people write to me say that certain master says this what do you have to comment i say i only teach what great master says i don't modify anything if some masters are saying something different is their business and the followers that follow those masters is their business so far as i am concerned i am sticking rigidly to the teachings of great master that he gave me which worked i go by the fact that his teachings worked and there is no more evidence needed for me except that they worked when i was holding a high office in india i was chief secretary of a state government at that time a group of people came from agra where this radha swami faith started and they came to me to take me to agra and become the master there i said i am not qualified to be a master at all moreover i have been initiated by hazur maharaj baba sawan singh and i am very happy about it they said but he was not a perfect master he was following a master who was expelled from the radha swami mat baba jamal singh his master was expelled so you should know that you are not following true master now we have come representatives of the original master who started this path and therefore you should be willing to come there and carry out the work from there and i said it is not possible for me to work anywhere other than where my master says and he says work is going to move to the west and especially the united states of america so i am going to go there so i said why did you come to me pick me up for that and the argument they gave was so strange they said that swami ji picked up as his disciple the best disciple as successor who was rai saligram he was postmaster general of the uttar pradesh government and because of his experience and seniority in the business he was able to do a good work and you being chief secretary of a state therefore you will do a good work <laughs> i said how was the gov- government work to do as an employee got to do with spiritual work there no connection between the two so therefore spirituality is not at all connected with what jobs you are doing we can do any job i said do you know that kabir was a weaver weaving cloth and his followers were rich princes and king and he kept on weaving cloth do you know that rabi das was a cobbler he is mending shoes his little store where he mended shoes was just outside the palace of the king and the king came several times to him to please move into my palace he said no my destiny my problem says i have to be a cobbler and i'll keep on repairing shoes but he was a great cobbler if you remember some of his stories from balk pakistan uh, from balk bukhara from the middle east an emperor was a, was a disciple of ravi da he decided that he will give up all his fortune just to go and sit at the feet of his master so all the wealth he collected on elephants and camels and horses and whole caravan was going to new delhi where the master lived in a small hut and the master didn't have much money he a, a young man who was also a cobbler came to the cobbler master and he said master i have to do the wedding of my daughter can you help with something so the master looked around he said donation have been very poor i can't find find much something but here are my old shoes if you like you can take these shoes so the master gave his shoes to that poor man and he said what will i get out of the shoes to marry my daughter but anyway it's a gift from the master i'll keep the shoes 
and he left. As he left, was walking out, the caravan of that prince was coming, and the prince began to feel sitting on a horse in the caravan. There's some fragrance coming. He says coming from the master, because very often people have experienced a strange fragrance, a smell that comes, which they cannot identify, but they like, and is very often the presence of the master. So he felt the presence of the master. He says, "Master is sending me his vibrations already through this. I'm so happy." And this man carrying the shoes passes by the caravan. When he goes behind, that special fragrance starts coming from behind. <laughs> so he stops the caravan. Says, "There is a guy walking. Uh, call him back." So they call him back and say, "What are you carrying with you?" He says, "I have to marry my." Daughter and I went to my master, and he gave me an old pair of shoes. He says, "Can you give those shoes to me? I am willing to buy them from you." He said, "Certainly, I was needing money anyway. Whatever you give me, I'll accept." He said, "I give you this whole caravan, <laughs> all the wealth you take it." And he took the shoes and walked almost by himself to the master, and said, "Master, thank you so much." For sending me your blessings and gift in advance through these shoes, and master says, "How much did you pay for it?" <laughs> He said, "I gave my caravan to the man." Master says, "That was still cheap." <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine, imagine what it means. We do not fully realize what it it means to have this op great opportunity. to get this kind of spiritual be benefit while we are in a human life and that is why i say congratulate you all because you are all seekers you have been marked soul you are all marked souls here and i also want to tell you something else when great master was appointed as a master he was sitting along with 13 other disciples 14 of them were sitting together when baba jamal singh his master said this is going to be my last talk to you my job is done and i want this work to be continued by you sawan singh who was sitting in front and baba sawan singh said why me i am seeing these other people around me the 14 of us are here they are all better meditators they all spend more time with you i am a busy man working in the military engineering service i am building roads and buildings working for them i hardly get time on weekend to come and see you why me and he said this is the order of my master uh, by the way all the masters perfect living master never take any credit to themselves anything they do they say it is done by their master that's unique about this perfect living master they will never take credit for anything they will say it's all the master doing it therefore baba jamal singh said it is not my order it is my master's order swami ji and i can check with him why he picked you up so baba jamal singh closed his eyes after minute or two he opened his eyes and said new moj has come the will has been expressed the will says only sawan singh will do this work <laughs> a great master said master there are some problem i must tell you my master was a little clever guy <laughs> he could negotiate a job <laughs> so he said master you are telling me that this whole dera will grow into a big place hundreds and thousands of people will come here i am a poor man i'll be retiring from my job getting a small pension and you want me to take care of thousands of people how will that happen and baba jamal singh said wait let me check it out so he closed his eyes after a while he opened his eyes and he said new moj has come <laughs> what is the new moj new moj is you will not have to spend even a penny from your pension the ones who come and join here will donate enough for this thing to run by itself they will bring enough food for your kitchen to run therefore don't have to worry about it 
Now take this responsibility. And Baba Sahaban Singh said, one more thing. <laughs> I am living in a very nice big house given to me by the government. You are living in a little small hut. Now are you trying to tell me I should leave that big house and come and live in a small hut? Baba Jamal Singh said, wait a minute. <laughs> and he closed his eyes. And after a couple of minutes, opened his eyes, said, new Moj has come. Ba Swamiji says, Savan Singh will get a better house when he's in the Dera than he's occupying now. So he got that deal also. But he wasn't done. He said, one more thing. The most important thing. He said, you tell your disciples, if they are initiated by you, they will come not more than four lives to get complete salvation from here and go away. Now you want me to do this job and you want me to initiate people and they should go in four lifetimes. I am trying to go away in this lifetime, you are going to hold me up for four lifetimes <laughs> for the sake of my disciples. And Baba Jamal Singh said, Wait a minute. Let me get the real Moj. So he closed his eyes, opened his eyes, said, New Moj has come. Swamiji says, Whoever Savan Singh will initiate will go back in the same life, will not have to come back unless he wants to come back. <laughs> then he said, Okay, sir, I'll take the job. And he assumed the responsibility. Baba Savan Singh, the great master. We are calling him great master. I call him the greatest master. You cannot imagine the amount of love you could feel flowing from him. It was not that we had to test him out. We did test him out sometimes. I used to test him out. That if you are real and you can help me, I am running late for the train. Can the train also be late? Then I'll catch it. <laughs> and that day train was late. I said, you passed on this one. <laughs> Let me try another one. So I was trying five, six times. And every time it was successful. Next time I met great master, he told me, are you keep on testing me or you go more forward also? <laughs> <laughs> then I said, enough. I've tested enough. And this is not the thing that I'm looking for. So I want to see how much progress one can make within. And he said something beautiful. He said that we are trained to make effort to achieve anything in life. And we think the same thing about spirituality. That we have to make an effort to get some results. And that is why the masters say meditate more. Follow these instructions. Follow this diet. Follow so many restrictions. Just to make it look like it's all dependent on our effort. Our mind likes that. Our mind says that's how we achieve anything in life. And if we have to achieve anything in spirituality, must be the same way. But he said that is not so. The effort counts very little. The grace of a master counts everything. When we make effort, our mind is not ready to make that effort. When we make effort, it's part of the grace. Only later on we discover that what we thought was our effort, our desire to seek, our desire to make more time for meditation, our desire to go and meet the Master, all these are part of the grace of the Master. When we make progress in this path, we discover everything was grace of the Master. So that is why it is so situated, the path is so made, that in the beginning it looks like we are making a lot of effort then effort fails, which is good. Effort fails, first time we realize it's not a path of effort. There's something else involved. And then we get several examples, several instances in our own life of master's intervention in daily affairs. We find that master is helping us in this. Small, small thing. Not only the ten things I tested him with, but thousands of things that happen in life. We can see the hand of the master in that. Then we realize that Master is helping in every possible way and he is also helping us in meditation. He is also helping on and making progress. Therefore, 
at the end we realize it's all master's grace, master's blessings. That is why we really need nothing more than master's blessings to make progress on this path. Effort will come by itself. The effortless part will also come by itself. The love and devotion will grow by itself so long as the blessings of master are there. Therefore, blessings are very important of a master. So I have learned these lessons and I am sharing them with you because you are all going through the same journey. We are all co-travelers on the same path. I feel very happy. People come to me and say, are you a master? I say, I am not at all. Do I look like one? Do I live like one? You can disqualify me any time you want from any of the criteria you carry. I am a disciple of great master doing service for him. And all the work that is being done here, I can assure you, is being done with the power of great master Baba Sahaban Singh, whose power is immense. And he is going to transform spirituality in the West and in the United States. But he is using instruments of his disciples. I just happen to be one of them. So that is not a, something to be proud about. I know that it's all master's work and he's doing it. Then I give credit to him for everything that he is doing. I must also say, people come to me to get my opinion about other masters. Masters of different lineages. I ask them, how many lineages are there? Because great master never believed in any lineage. He said there is no lineage in spirituality at all. Masters appear where they are seekers. They appear automatically where they are seekers. They have appeared like this everywhere in the world. Wherever they are seekers, perfect masters appear. Other masters also appear. But those masters take us towards the state of consciousness when we need a perfect living master. There are so many levels to which we can rise in the spiritual path. We can find a discovery of our own astral self, a self that has a much longer life, that was there before we were born, that will be there after we die. That's a big discovery. So many masters think that's enlightenment and the end of our journey. The other masters who say that's not the end of the journey, we still have a body. We have not found what is the life, the soul in that body. They go further and they find that the mind that creates the universe, the universal mind is the ultimate and they end there. And they all believe they are perfect living masters because that is what they have experienced. But there are some masters who go even beyond that. They say the mind or universal mind is not the end of our journey. The soul, the, the spirit that creates the mind, that creates everything is beyond that. And then they go even beyond and discover the soul in an area they call Par Brahm, beyond, beyond Brahm, beyond the mind region, beyond these three worlds. And we, we are still we call them perfect living masters because they discover the immortality of the soul. But the perfect living masters, like great master Baba Sahaban Singh, take us beyond that. And they take us, the name and discovery of your soul is not the ultimate truth. The ultimate truth is there is no separate soul, there is only one totality of consciousness. All souls are always a part of that totality. That is where his teachings take us. That is what I am sharing with you. I am not sharing anything less than that. And I know if you follow the teachings of the great master, that is your destination, totality of consciousness, our real true home, our real Sachkhand. That is where we go. This dome is merely a building that we are making up. The building will not contain spirituality. Building will contain the opportunity to see masters, hear masters, have their company and make progress. But still a building. So do not start worshipping the building. The dome that has to be worshipped is not the dome we are building, but this dome we are carrying on our head. <laughs> this dome contains the whole thing. And that dome is merely for convenience, for logistics and, and for having meetings. Don't forget this. Why am I saying this? Because I was one of the small sevadas working in building what is called the Satsangar, the place of discourses built at the Dera in India. And today I went and saw people are worshipping that place, thinking that the five levels of the little pillar they made are the ways to Sajkhand. They started worshipping a building instead of realizing the real thing to, to worship and to achieve is inside us. So that is why I'm making it clear. 
Buildings do not contain spirituality. The building that contains spirituality is the human body. That is, the kingdom of God is within this body, not an outer body, not an outer building. We build with our with our engineer, architects. They can't build our true home. The true home is built by the Creator already in our own heads. So that is why the teachings of great master are very clear. Go within, go within, go further within, discover who you are, and you will find everything that has to be discovered is lying in these small physical heads of ours, while we are the physical plane. It's a wonderful opportunity for us. Thank you very much once again for inviting me to come and see you all. And I'm so happy to see the progress you are making here. And I believe by next year, we'll probably see a dome sitting here. Yes. This is uh, in Great Master's time. Uh, hypothetically speaking, if the langar needed eleven more minutes to prepare lunch, <laughs> <laughs> hypothetically, what would Great Master do? He would stop talking and let some people sing songs. <laughs> <laughs>